So, happy Hanukkah everyone. I don't know about you, but I'm full of energy for our lecture today that's about energies and, uh, and also lights and, uh, and things very festive for Hanukkah. And let's go uh, straight uh, to business. So, just one thing about the finals that are going to come in a few weeks. Um, you all uh, could see the date at which you're uh, slated to give you five minutes of glory uh, on the website. If there's any problem with the timing or something else, feel free to just write us and we'll find a solution. Uh, we're open to that. We understand there's all sorts of obligations, commitments, etc. Also, if you need extra time, let us know. And um, you'll also see the whole schedule of how it works in terms of preparing for it. It's also pretty important. And we expect that by, uh, by when you hand in the next exercise in two weeks, you'll also be suggesting what the subject would be of your final project. And it's okay to afterwards change. So you can, you can suggest something, or if you're debating among two options or three options, feel free to just uh, let us know and we'll try to help you sort it out. Any questions, disputes, something to know about, something I forgot? It's, just, it's more efficient if, they, if you suggest someone to like, replace the equilibrium. Yeah. Easier for us. Can you repeat it, please? Uh, so, you already, we, we put on the website the list of speakers in every week. And the last point by Leo was that if, if you want to, to change time, if you know somebody else that's willing to switch with you, that would help us. But we're still open, I would say, right? That like, even if you just say, you know, it's too early for me, or I have a big problem or something like that, we'll find a solution. So no worries. Yeah. Ah, yes. And, and the other thing is that, uh, as you see, we have the lectures. And then afterwards, we have the presentation of the final projects. And in order to facilitate everybody in the class and to give everybody the time, etc., we'll have the last presentation of, of the final projects would be on the f just after the semester ends, so at the, final, at the first week of the uh, testing period. Okay, so this would be on uh, February 15th, right? So I'll be happy if, uh, if you mark it in your calendar that... You know, we're meeting here every Wednesday, 11 to 1. Also on February 15th, we'll also be meeting. If it somehow uh, collides with the test that you have, also let us, an exam, let us know, we'll solve that. Yes, and finally, we're also giving you a, another thing. On January 11th, no lecture. Okay, so this would be just as like we'll be finishing the lectures and we'll be moving towards the final project presentations. And between them, instead of one week, you'll have two weeks, which will also give you more time to prepare and all that. Great. Okay, let's jump right in uh, to the question of energy and what, you know, and try to improve our capability to use numbers to make all sorts of inferences about energy, okay? <coughs> let's take a concrete example. Let's say, let's say I'm giving you a snack bar and you want that in order to give you the energy to climb up a mountain. How far can you climb? using a snack bar. Question is clear? You can start thinking about it, well, I'll write it down. Okay. How high can you climb with the energy in a snack? Snack bar, energy bar, whatever. Excuse me? Okay, so how, any suggestions how to approach this? Okay, how many calories are in an energy bar? Right, so, so I probably want to know something about the energy. So let's say we could try to do this divide and conquer. I want to know how much energy in bar and divide it by what? How much energy to climb? Yeah, energy to climb. Energy, let's say to climb one meter. Something like that, right? Okay, so that's the that's the first say, stage in the divide and conquer. Okay, all I need is this divided by this. And now divide and conquer, usually you continue dividing. Okay, so how do I divide this? How much energy in the bar? Number of calories. 
Okay, how do I get to that? You have written, that's usually good, but let's say now you don't have, I know, how many have snack bar in their backpack? Okay, so you can peel, pull it out, but don't tell us the answer yet. We could break it, uh, you know, it, uh, that's even better. But we could, <laughs> we could, so we could break it into two things, right? This could be like the weight <coughs> of the bar times the calorie density. So indeed, if you remember it, that's great. If you have it, that's great. But you know, I, I like to get the things from, you know, like basic principle or basic something, and that really helps me. Because then I don't need to know, okay, you'll get it. Okay, what's the weight of a bar? 10 grams. I have 10 grams. It's really small. I have 100 grams. Okay, so we had something like 10, 140, okay? So one way to approach such things is to usually get like a lower bound, an upper bound, like say uh, it's definitely higher than something, something, it's lower than something, and then just take like the, the geometric average or the mean average or something like that, or take the median, we had a few there. So I think 10 and 100 brings me with the geometric mean something like 30. Okay? Well, do, do we have a, an official answer? 20. 20 grams. Okay. So let's make it 25. I had 30, 20, let's make it 25 grams. The next thing would be caloric density. Like how many calories per gram? 500 calories per gram. Yeah, okay. Yeah, so I'm thinking that now I want to... Okay, so we broke it down. That, that's the thing also... Just, just one second. That's the thing also with like when you have... When you want to talk about the whole thing, it might be confusing. But if you break it down into like, say, density per something, that's like... Then it doesn't change much. It's always kind of the same. So anybody knows, maybe you remember things about like density of food? Okay, so I think that's the, the classic thing that you'll see if you, you know, if you read anything about nutrition. So, yeah, so they talk about four calories per gram. This is for carbs, carbohydrates, and nine calories per gram. This is for fat or lipids. I wonder, like, who heard these numbers, well, you know, sometime in their lifetime? Okay, uh, a good fraction. Great, so there was a point, though, somebody made here, that when you talk about calories, there's this thing that, like, actually, you see, I wrote it with a big C. There's, like, big calories and small calories. Small calories are just a stand, like, what you use in physics, etc. It's actually, every calorie is, like, a thousand. It's a K calorie. Okay, it's this stupid thing, you know, historical thing whatever, so it's really K calories. Okay, good. What, what is in the snack bar? Is it this or that? Carbs. I think it's mostly carbs, although, you know, again, you can check on the snack bar what's there, right? So just, for the, just to make it uh, our life simple, let's take four calories or kilocalories, sorry, per gram. I'm multiplying that, I'm getting about a hundred kilocalories per bar. So far so good? Great. So we have this part of the, now about this. How do we have, how do you know, I, I want to climb a mountain, how much energy do I need? So letting a mass into a height of something, so it's the, the, like the weight of the mass times the height, it's, it's like kind of some kind of process you can Great. So let's talk about, you know, I, I don't want to make it into, a, you know, a, a whole physics course and or physiology. So let's say we're just taking the most basic thing and then just talk about, you know, you might remember there's something called MGH, like some, how much energy is, what's the relation between gravi dealing with gravitation and energy. Okay, one equation that maybe you remember from high school. So the energy required, that's for to climbing some height is MGH. And now there's also a question of efficiency. How well am I turning the efficiency in the snack bar into a height gain? Okay? 
Just to make it life easy now, let's make it 100%. Okay, because I don't want to get into, you know, it's a complicated thing to derive. Let's do 100% and then we could, you know, move from there. Great, so what do I need now? MGH. And I, actually, I feel, first wanted to, so we're going to get the result here. What, what's M? Our mass. mass. Our mass. So how much would that be? Let's say 100 kilograms. What is G? Gravitation. Yeah, it's 10. The units, I don't even remember. Ah, so, okay, so we need, it needs to be, it's complete. It's yeah, joule per kilogram per uh, distance per meter. Right, that's, a, that's an easy way to do it. It's, it's not a joule, it's not basic, whatever. But it's 10. And now the question is high, that, that's the thing I'm trying to find out. Okay, so this is going to be a thousand times h. Okay. One meter. One meter the height. No, no. Okay. Now, now I'm doing. I'm doing the whole energy, not per. Um, yeah. Okay. I didn't do it very elegantly. Okay, follow me for a second and you'll see how it's, like it's, you could do it per meter or you could just do the total energy, make it equal to that, which is, or you could do it per meter. So it's okay, you know what, actually, that's good. Forget it, this, but then it's not that equation. Okay, it's like delta E divided by age, meaning how much energy per height, this is equal to mg, and this is a thousand. Okay, you can think about it that way. Uh, not super elegant, but uh, it is what it is. Okay, and it comes out to joule per meter. Okay, that's actually useful for me. Thanks for, for this. Because now when you look at it this way, you say, ah, that's great. It's how many joules per meter. But then you need to give me the other value in joules. Okay, you see, by the way, how I'm playing with units, which is not, you know, not, not everybody feel convenient with that, even me. But it's actually something that really helps your thinking, see that, like, you know, if you're going in the right direction or what's happening. Good. So I have 100 calories, uh, kilocalories per bar. Okay, so now it tells me, no, no good, don't stay with calories, you need to go to joules, because that's how physics like to, likes to work. Okay, so how do I go from this to that? Divide by four. So I need to multiply it by, so the, somebody said divide by four. Wait, four talents. What? Four talents. Okay, so you can make it more accurate, but, but there's a question, do you multiply by four or divide by four? That's always, that's always confusing. Should you divide by four or multiply? So here you divide. And so you want to... Okay, so I know I'm, I'm in kilocalories and I want to go to joules. Ah. And I always get confused and you got confused. But that's fine because the units don't get confused. Why? Because kilocalories, I need to have kilocalories here and joules here. So it would go to joules. Okay, so now, okay, if I have one kilocalorie, how many joules is it? 4,000, let's say, uh, four something. But. And you can see I actually need to multiply by four and not divide by four. And the units told me that, that I have to do it that way. Great, so 4,000 times 100, that's 400,000. And kilocalories go with kilocalories, so that's the number of joules that I have per bar. And now I know I'm getting 100 joules per meter. So now if I want to go the, if I get the, let's call it the big H, this value, big H is equal to 400,000 joules per bar divided by 1,000 joules per meter. And I'm getting about 400 meters. Yeah, per bar. Okay? So, you can go, you can, I think my daughter is now actually climbing Metzada as we speak, which is pretty funny. And actually, I think that's about the height. So, with one snack bar, in principle, with 100% efficiency, and if she weighs 100 kilos, she could go <laughs> up, uh, up Metzada. Okay? I think it's pretty powerful. Like, right? Like, like, we, did, like we didn't use... Like the, the tools we used or the number used, I know some of them might be new to you, but actually there's nothing like, I'm pretty sure you know, you can remember some of that. And then it really tells you something about the world. 
And if you think about like after you climb up a metzada, usually you want to have like a, you want to eat something. And you probably ice cream or two snack bars or something like that. Great. So, we have this and that. Any comments about uh, climbing metzada with snack bar before we move on? It feels a little low. It feels like you would be eating all the time, like uh, based on this calculation. Like you would have to eat a lot. Okay, so it seems like for the lunch break, for the for the recess, you have good to, like whether you think it's uh, not uh, to, to have a snack bar or not. I'm sure there could be like a very happy conversation about it. I, I want to go back. I want to now focus on this for a second. Yeah, we looked at the protein as, as, a, as, as a energy source, but actually it's, it's not what it's used for usually. What, the snack bar? The protein uh, content of the snack bar. Okay, I, I think the protein content is not what it's, I don't know. Ah. Protein is a small part of the snack bar, I yeah, think. Like we could check what, how much protein there is in it. I don't think that, that much. 10%. Okay, negligible. No protein. <laughs> um, so I think somebody before us talked about, say, one half or one third. I think one third is about right. I think one third is about right. So in theory, if I burn it entirely to energy, I could like use an elevator to raise myself a hundred meters in the air. It sounds like absolutely crazy. Okay. Okay. So can you say it again? You say. Like if you can convert this to to pure energy, like the snack bar, then you can raise yourself in an elevator 100 meters in the air. It sounds... 400 meters. It, it <laughs> almost doesn't make sense. Well, the elevator is about to cut it. Okay, so... so, so yeah, I'm saying it's non-weighting elevator. Okay. So, 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 I'm, so I'm really happy both about this comment, but I also think the, the thinking is very good in the sense that like in a way, you, like you thought about it, I would say like independently, like like... It, it, there's one thing about like, you know, doing some calculation, getting some answer, and then we continue with our life. But then like sometimes you just say, uh, hey, just say, do I really believe it? Like, does it make sense to me? And you're saying there's something strange here. It's only like one small snack bar. And I could go in an elevator or whatever. Elevator is complicated because yeah. there's a question of, tied but like tied by, by something that would take me 400 meters high with, if it's 100% efficiency. And the answer is, this is what we got. <laughs> so it seems like your intuition might be might, we might need to improve our intuition about this there's something in the density of it's not some specific snack bar that I'm promoting <laughs> but you know in general in food there's, a, there's a quite a density in, in respect to uh, to gravitation okay let, let's let, actually let's continue with that line of thought in, in a few minutes because you'll see it, it actually repeats itself in a way. Okay, let's talk about this for a second. The four kilo, uh, kilocalories per gram of carbs versus nine for fat. And let's, let's make it into a question. Uh, why is butter more dense in energy than bread? Can you say why you mean uh, biologically? I, um, yes, chemically. biologically, chemically, physically. So in organisms, uh, they use the uh, lipids to store energy in more efficient ways than in uh, carbs, right? Okay, so so that that's true. I'm thinking. Uh, so I'm, I I want to get into those numbers and try to say, okay, how come is it that lipids have more energy content than carbohydrates? Okay, so let's take a few answers. Density of the bonds. We had this thing about, you know, the evolutionary reason for to store things densely. Is it coming down to how much water makes up the fraction of the gram and lipids are more anhydrous? Okay, something with, with water. How they have more carbon. So more carbons. How much, how, sorry, how many CO2 molecules? Yeah, so how many CO2 molecules you can create in the, in the process of using it? 
Okay, there's different ways to think about it. Let me show you one thing I like, one way I like to think that actually connects to what was say, said here in a few ways. So what is, uh, it's kind of like the effort of trying to get, uh, so the logic of numbers for like basic reasons. So what's a carbohydrate, anybody remembers? What's the chemical Chemicals. bond formula, what's in it? H Okay, so this is like glucose, uh, C6, H12O6, but th that's true, but the basic constituent in a way is C, H2O, or you could just think about it this way. There's C, and O, H, and H, and then this whole thing just repeats itself n times. Okay, so that's, that's a way to think about what's a carbohydrate. Okay, what's a fat or a lipid? Right, so, so it's kind of like, it's again, it's also these long chains that sometimes have all sorts of heads and all sorts of stuff I don't remember. But, and there's maybe sometimes you have, they have double something. But the easiest way to think about it is just like this. It's also repeating units, hydrocarbons. They just have a lot of carbons like this with hydrogens. And from time to time, they have a double bond and they have something and all sorts of things like that. But in principle, you can, this is like to first order, or like to simplification, that's what we have here. So far? Okay, so now look at something interesting. There's, it's true that like you can do the quantum mechanical thing about how all of this, how much energy is in the reactions and the movement of the electron and all that. But let's say it's just the same in a way, because like you're going to, you know, you break and create bonds. But if you look at density, there's how much energy is created per unit mass. Okay, what's the mass of this in Daltons? I have this 12 plus 1 plus 1, 14 plus 16. Okay, so the molecular weight is 40 Dalton. Okay, 12 plus 16 plus 1 plus 1. Uh, 30, sorry. Thanks. Of course, it's 30. Okay. What about this? So I have 12, 1, 1, so that's molecular weight of 4. 14. <laughs> I had a hard day. Yeah. Okay, 14 Dalton. So what do we see immediately? We see that even if we don't take into account the fact that, you know, when this is going to react with oxygen, there's going to be all sorts of things happening, already from the get-go, from the start, this is about twice as dense in, in uh, potential energy, etc., than this one. Meaning that even if I had just the same things happening in terms of the change in electrons and, and, and release of energy, it would be over a weight that would be half than this. Meaning that you'll have double the energy content. I see some surprises here. What do you mean by here by density? Okay, density is how much energy, so I'm going to take this and in the body we're going to oxidize it. Okay, and as was said here, all sorts of electrons are going to move around, bonds would be broken, bonds would be created, whatever. Same is going to happen here. In terms of density, I'm saying, let's say, after you do all this, we think how, how many of these things happened, how much energy was released per unit of mass. So per repeat, repeating unit, even if you had the same thing happening here and here in terms of the changes, it would be per mass that's half here than here, meaning the density would be double here than here. So much of this difference is actually super pretty to explain, super simple to explain. There's some things happening in rearrangements with oxygen, with reaction with oxygen, and it's just much denser because you don't have the oxygen there. The oxygen here that added a lot of weight. Space, okay. Like physical space also. What? Weight and also physical space. Like yeah, yeah. So we so because we did it per gram. Now we could talk about how does what does it mean per liter or per whatever per ml. But you could you could say that only because you know how the reaction will look like. Because if I don't know the reaction is more efficient because of the oxygen. Then you would maybe get more from the carbs than the fat. Like you 
can say what you're saying only because you already know that the reaction isn't like only related to the oxygen. Okay, so, so, so I agree with you that if, if you had very different, completely different things happening, you know, by orders of magnitude, then this, you know, that would change the result. I, I, it, it's kind of, I have to say, you know, it's kind of like, a, I, I think about it as something cute, or some very, it's nice to simplify things and understand actually there's nothing super different. Let's say, when people think about fat versus, you know, uh, carbohydrates, they usually think about, you know, completely, I, th I think some people, I know, I, I thought, you know, that's like, who knows, it's like completely different. But I'm so like saying, and yeah, maybe I couldn't know it for a priori, but now that I know this, I'm saying it, it's actually not that different in, in, the, in it, except for the fact that one thing has some dense thing in it that makes the, the density be different in terms of energy, quant energy density. Okay, and that actually also relates to the thing about, you know, why did evolution choose to store energy in this way? Yeah, because it's a much smarter way, it's much more dense because it's less weight per repeating unit. Okay. And clearly it's a simplification, there's other things happening. If you do the stoichiometry, there's a bit more, you know, oxidating this is different. Anyway, good. I heard this statement being said that this surprised me. Uh, it was said that uh, in the next for decades, humanity will need to produce more food than in the past eight thousand years. So, in, in total, so like, so, so in total, and why do they take one eight thousand years? Uh, yeah, so since uh, it's talking about like agri the challenge of agriculture, if you like, and thinking about, okay, everything that happened in agriculture, you know, until now, everything we produced since we invented agriculture, or agriculture invented us, and versus what's going to happen between now and the next few decades. Okay, so that was the statement, and that's why they chose whatever they chose. Do you have any gut feeling whether so now I'm yeah. I'm curious whether this is correct or not? Do you look at the people, the number of people who lived in the last eight thousand years compared to the next four decades? How much food do you need to feed them? So I'm curious how do we do how do we check this? Population size. Yeah. Uh, not only I mean mostly uh, cattle and uh, how how much more meat we eat because I think that the amount of food produced for uh, Right, so we're going to get into this thing in, in, in a bit as well. Um, so here, here's a way to try and approach this thing. I, I'm, I'm curious about like when people tell you these things, whether they're true or not. I have to say my gut feeling was that this is strange. And I wanted to check myself. So we could think about, okay, what's going to happen in the next uh, four decades versus what's happened so far in the history of humanity. What's the challenge here? The challenge here is that uh, humanity is, has not been static, to say the least, right? It's been, you know, growing very quickly. And now how do I, you know, it's, what number do I take for the number of people in humanity? Looking forward, it's kind of like a bit simpler, right? Because in the next four decades, what's going to be the size of humanity? Yeah, so about 10 billion. So... If I want to break it down, I could say in the next, the part about the next four decades, we have about 10 times 10 to the 9 people. And I'm going to multiply it over how many years? Let's say 40 years. So now there's a, there's a neat trick here that I can work in interesting units, which are 
people years, like the multiplication of people years. Okay, it's so like how much food you need per person per year. I call it one would be one person year. So I have about 40 billion person year. Um, uh, yeah, right. Let's make it 4, 10 to the 11. Yeah. Thanks. 10 to the 9, 10 to the 10, 10 to the 11 times 4. Okay? So this is how much I'm going to use, uh, I would need. Another question is how much, you know, we produce so far. And here I, f I thought, you know, it's nice to work with person years. And I could go down and break down humanity into segments of time. So one way to approach is to say, okay, right now, you know, we're, pro we're going very quickly. So I want to do it like stepwise in, in values. That, so I could say, for example, for a while recently, we've been F a few times 10 to the 9 people. For how long? For a few decades. You might remember this notation. It's F like a few, like three you can think about it. A few tens of years. And if I'm multiplying that, this brings me to how much? Few times few is 10. 100, 10 to the 9. So that's about 10 to the 11 year person. Before that, before we were a few billion, we were about a billion people. For about a hundred years. This brings me to another 10 to the 11 year person. Before 10 to the 9, we were about 10 to the 8 people. For about a hundred years, uh, for about a thousand years. Okay, if I'm thinking back in history, we were, it really is that like we became a bill, like we passed to the second billion just around the 30s, I think. So it's like a few decades this. Then this was like a hundred years, I think in 1800 or something like that, we became a billion. And then, anyway, in, in you know, Roman time, you could go back to Roman times and see, you know, when did we, be, we pass the threshold from 100 to a, billion, to a billion? Anyway, this brings us again to the 10 to the 11. And then you can say, before the revolution, uh, we were about 10 million, so let's say, or a few millions, not even 10 billion. So then, about 10,000 years, at uh, 10 million, this would give us another 10 to the 11 year people. And you can see when I'm summing up, I'm also getting a few times person year. Now, don't take me seri too seriously. I'm not saying that, you know, I'm getting exactly the same value in no way. But you can see that, like, in terms of passing a sanity check, yeah, it passed my sanity check. At least to a factor of two or something like that. And you can see I... I I did it in a way that bypasses a lot of things. For example, I didn't get into the whole issue of how much, you know, there was a mention here about um, uh, meat or beef and how much calories does that take. It's, I didn't get into all of those things. I just worked in, you know, people years. And this went around many of the things about yield and, you know, how, how do you produce things and how much land area do you have. There, there could have been many ways to go about it would have got me in a bog that I would have got into like really complicated stuff. All of this thing with, you know, with food, it relates to uh, the, our need for energy. And so my challenge now is like to, to you is to try to estimate or to calculate how much energy do you need or Let's say if you think about yourself as like a, as a consuming, let's say, electricity or energy, how much energy are you producing? So, what? Producing or consuming? Uh, let's say let's say producing, producing as a, as heat. What is the energy 
It's a, a alcoholic production. You'll see why afterwards. Although you're also consuming it, of course. Production of a human. It might connect to that. We could talk about it soon. Um, what, what am I looking for? What, what would be the units of what I'm, I'm asking you about? So let's talk about units for a second because it's something kind of confusing with energy. Can you give me all sorts of units of energy? Yeah. Let's just, so I have jowl, calories, calories. Watt. what? Watt. Watt. Newton per meter. <coughs> Newton per meter. Okay, that's what, maybe what I missed before. You can just use anything like ah, it's that. Newton times meter, no? Yeah. Yeah, okay, no, let's not get into it now. I think it's force meter. Yeah, what? You can also use things that we see daily, so to move a car, uh, it's not an energy, but it's a way to think about it. It's also yeah, but I ask, ask a simple question. Give me units of energy. So what, what are the units of energy? What? Okay, I, I know there's like things like uh, horsepower. BTU, horsepower. Anything else? What? Okay, so let's talk about it. That's great. Okay, another one, maybe BTU nobody knows, so forget about it. But there's also one kilowatt hour. Okay, maybe more, no? Okay, so this is actually, so I did it on, on purpose in a way. I want to differentiate between two things here. What are the two things? Uh, right, there's things with our energy and things that are power. So if I'm not mistaken, this would be power. And this would be energy. It's not a conversion. It's already this is uh, this is this is energy. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, of course, right. Sorry. Yeah. So I did. Ah, I messed it up. It's good you keep me on my toes, as they say. Yeah. So I don't like the BTU anyway, and I wrote it with a W <laughs> instead of a U. So yeah, kilo watt hour. Now it's fine. Thanks. So. Yeah, so we want to differentiate between energy, which is these things in joules, but also we did calories or something else that we'll talk about in a second if we want, and power, which is per energy per unit time. So for example, what is joule per second? Kilowatt hour is when you're using a thousand watts over an hour, so 3,600 seconds. Horsepower, that's something, I don't know, it's pretty close to kilowatt, it's like 700 something uh, watts or something like that, like a thousand watts. And there's other units. Okay, why am I telling you all of this? Because I want to go back to that. And now I'm, I was asking like, in what units would the answer be? Okay, so it, would it be calories or would it be power? So I'm asking about the energy production. Okay, so, so no, so I'm, I'm talking about yes. Yeah, so I'm talking. What is the power? Thanks. <laughs> okay, so now it's clear. We're talking about something that in the end we want to get in units of say watts, and the question is, what is the number that would come here? And I suggest we take uh, a short break, and you try to come up with an answer at the end of the break. Okay, so we'll take 10 minutes break, and that's your challenge. Okay, let's get going. So just to be clear, uh, in all of those things, I know it's challenging. So like, and, 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 and we're a heterogeneous group, so it's no surprise that, you know, on some things I'm asking, you know, somebody knows this number, somebody knows that number. The fact that you don't know that number, that's fine. Like, we're just like in the learning process, and it's always when you have a lot of people you're getting that kind of, uh, of a feeling that somebody knew something, how come I didn't know it? But that's completely natural. So how would I try to approach this question? So we're talking at the power used by humanity, by, by a human, 
production, consumption, etc. Any thoughts? Maybe calories. Maybe calories. Okay, so something maybe about our te body temperature and how much energy we're losing, yes? How much we eat a day? Okay. How much we eat a day? Okay. Yeah, how much we do, how much we eat during hours, like how we go out. Okay, so how much do you eat? I hope it's a politically correct answer. <laughs> it, it's, uh, it's fine. How much do we eat? 2,000 calories. Yeah, so it depends on, on, you know, on several things, but, you know, I think 2,000 calories... That now you know it's like 2,000 kilocalories per day per person. That's a that's a good uh, good value to carry. Okay, so now you could look at it. You know, you could do a few playing around with the number, right? One way to think about it is like, okay, if I have this, just for the fun of it, I can say it's about uh, if I want to go from day to hour. So it's about 20 hours per day. So I'm getting about 100 kilocalories per hour. And if, I, if a person is 100 kilograms, it means what? That I'm consuming about one kilocalorie per hour per kilogram. I'm not yet answering the, 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 the power. I'm just, I just thought it's like a cool number. Okay, for every kilo in your body, every hour, you need to feed it with a calorie or with a kilocalorie. Okay. That being put aside, let's go back to where we were, 2,000 kilocalories per day. How do I go from this into the watts? That's my challenge now. So I need to do some unit conversion, like we often need to do in life. Let's get rid of this. It's going to take us from kilocalories per day. In the, uh, in the end, it's going to be watts. What is watts? Watts. We know it's a jow. Oh. <laughs> yeah, bad day. Joule per second. Okay, so how am I going to get to joule per second? I need to turn the day into seconds and the kilocalories into joules. Not the end of the world. I've done worse things in life. So the kilocalories to joules. So we have a thousand. So we have a thousand. Uh, I want to go to. Uh, I have kilocalories, calories. So one kilocalorie is a thousand calories. Fine? Okay. Now I want to go from, I want to turn calories into joules. What's happening here? One calorie, four joules. Okay, so let's, let's stop here for a second. 2,000 times four, that's 10,000, let's say. Kilocalories. Kilocalories, calories, calories. Great. So I have 10,000 joules per day. No, you're missing another thousand. Yeah. I'm missing another thousand, right? Yeah, thanks. 10 million joules per day. It would be very difficult if it was just 1,000 per day, 10,000 per day. Okay. So now I just want to get from the, from the day to a second. So I have 10 million joules per day now I just need to go so I could do I could do the whole jump I just remember there's about a hundred thousand seconds in a day but you might not remember that so let's do it more slowly so we had uh, we want to go from day let's say we'll have first uh, hour so that's one day 20 hours but then we also want to go from hour to second, so that's one hour, 3,600 seconds, right? And if you multiply this by that, 
20, 24 times that, this is about 100,000. That's one day, 10 to the 5 seconds. Okay, 20, this is 70, 70, let's make it 100. So, what do I have here? 10 to the 7 divided by 10 to the 5. So I have 10 to the 7 divided by 10 to the 5, or 10 to the 2 <coughs> joule per second, or 100 watts. What? We are just, light bulb. We're just an old light bulb. Okay. <laughs> the more thin, like we're old light bulbs. Okay, for those like when you look when you look at the old light bulbs and you have like 60 watts, 45 watts, 90 watts, so it's like in the incandescent lights, and today they're doing it several times more efficient. In the in, okay, so we're gonna we're gonna get to the sun in a minute. Uh, let's see, we're gonna get to the sun from different directions. Okay, for, so first of all, you got it now. You know, each of us has a power of 100 watts. From which you can infer all sorts of things. For example, if you know, in summer you're inviting friends and you're wondering whether the air conditioning would be hand, hand, able to have, like would it be a big effect of the fact that there's lots of people in the room versus what the air conditioning could do? You can quickly do like a quick calculation. Just on the fact that the people are there, let's say you invited 20 people, you're going to add to the room another 2 kilowatts. That's a, of power, okay? Every person is 100 watts, 20 people, two kilowatts. What's the good air conditioner? Like a normal air conditioner, output of cooling? What? Yeah, so I hear 800 watts for a small one. I think that's about, so about one kilowatt of cooling for like a small one. If you have a, you know, a medium-sized one, it, you could handle two. So it's gonna balance out the fact like you have the air conditioning you know, fully on, versus lots of people coming to visit you, it's gonna, it's not gonna, like, it's gonna balance each other. So if it's a whole day, you won't get the effect of the cooling of the air conditioning further than that. This, this is the power of a human, it means the potential power of him to do uh, work, or that it uh, radiates with heat uh, the whole time? Okay, great question. I think this is kind of like the example of what we had before, like, you know, it really think, or let's think what it really means, not just the fact that we got an answer. So the question is, is this like the energy with which you can do stuff? Or this is the energy that you're just like uh, dissipating as heat, etc. Both, 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 yeah. Okay, so, okay, so we have both in the same, uh, each one have, it like depends how you define things. I would say that's the total energy. So that's like the sum of both, if you want. The, then there's a question of how much, how efficient can you be out of the total that you're, how much actually useful work can you do? And now it kind of like goes like to the snack bar and climbing Metzada and stuff like that. And it depends. You can't, you can't do with, you can't with that do 100 power, watts of power. No, you can't because you can't do it 100% efficiency. Mm -hmm. How much can you do? Now it depends if you're walking, if you're cycling, if you're doing whatever. Okay. Obviously, if somebody wants to do a final project on this, there's a lot that could be gained from this. So, you know, yeah. just a hint. Is there an uh, upper limit, let's say, to how much output you could have from a single unit, like a single unit, single person, right? Uh, so we calculated the average, right? Yeah, so this is the average. So the question is, can you get how much more than you can get? What do you think? So Phelps is like eating 10,000 calories a day, so you can definitely eat this. Yeah, so, so I think like, like you know, uh, top, top athletes, be it, you know, cyclists or swimmers or something, they, they usually, they could eat, say, as being claimed here, I think that's about right, say four times more. Meaning that on average, they're meeting four times more. You know, there are many more light bulbs than us, mortals. <laughs> and, and, and then you could ask, you know, probably they're not doing it in their sleep. They might not be so different than us. Now the question is when they're doing the Tour de France, how much are they? And that's interesting. It seems like they're doing, they're doing something there. <laughs> it's interesting. They might be, yeah, they might be equal to like, say, a kilowatt hour rather than a hundred watts. There's like a 
which by the way, I could imagine, right? Like, again, like going to how you try to intuitively do your, so, you know, when you think 100, like one kilowatt, that's kind of like the things that we put in, in the winter to warm ourselves. And I could see myself, you know, somebody who's doing the Tour de France and, you know, being like, you know, this, this you know, warm, you know, things that you put it, you know, that emit one kilowatt per, or like an air conditioner that like emits something. Okay, let's go. I think we're fine. Let's move on. Let's talk about the sun in that respect, by the way. So we know that we're emitting 100 watts, you know, per person. Let's say for 100 kilos, 50 kilos, something like that. So this gives you some density of energy production per unit mass, right? Or per unit, yeah. You can ask, what's the density of production of energy in the sun per unit mass? What do you think? Is it, let's say, much higher, roughly the same, much lower? So I'll be really surprised if somebody doesn't think it's much higher. But actually, when you do the calculation, it's way, way lower. Because the sun is huge. The sun is huge, but also it produces huge amounts of energy. So it's hard to, hard to get an answer, right? It's very far. Is it density? It's also very far. <laughs> <laughs> it's only the core of the sun. That, the... Yeah, so there's this thing with the core of the sun, and is it denser? It's also intuitive because like, it sounds like but it might not be very dense because you know, it's like just like plasma. It turns out, just I'm saying as a fun fact, I don't have a lot of time to go into it. It's like four orders of magnitude less, like we're four, uh, 10,000 times more powerful than the sun per unit mass in terms of energy production. Yeah. Like conceptually, that kind of makes sense because if you took the amount of people it would take to fill up the space that the sun can like fill and you put them there, like you're more than, you'd be putting out a lot more energy in that, that group. So, so, so I would say, I would say it, it shows me how for some things, our intuition, when it goes to things that are very different than things we're dealing with in, in our life, you know, is not very good and we need some handle, such as, you know, numbers or something in order to be able to check ourselves or to understand something. Okay, it's, it's not something that comes necessarily naturally that you know the answer. But if you have numbers, you can get like a, this extra capability to know. Great, let's do something uh, challenging. I want to know how much land do I need per person to create our food. Okay, I think that's very important, even more than knowing the other things we just calculated. What is the land area you need to grow your food. And I would ask you to try and think again, how would you, if you had to, you know, if your life depended on it, how would you try and, and, and estimate that? Or calculate it how would you break down the problem I'd be surprised if you can give me an answer now but how would you go about and like divide the problem into pieces that then you have a good chance to try and, uh, and tackle okay think about it for a second while I'm erasing and arranging Question is clear? Any thoughts about how would you break down the problem? Okay, I'm looking for new people, yeah. So, yeah. Okay, fantastic. So, so thinking, for example, of something that's a staple food like wheat, which gives us so many things starting from pizza and anything beyond. And 
tie to see, okay, given that yield, how much, you know, what's the yield per unit area and how much would I get from it? That's good. Same with the solar irradiance, like per area, and you can say like one percent of that goes into like crop like production. So you kind of know like your density of your energy density. Okay, so we could start from like if we want to go uh, to go all the way to land. In order to go for land, you want to know something maybe from the solar radiation, how much energy comes from the sun, and then from that go towards uh, the result. So let's, let's do it in, in, let's combine both ways that were suggested here. What do we know in the end? In the end, we know we need to get 100 watts. Right? We just calculated it together. And now the question is how, what do we need to do? How much land do we need in order to get this 100 watt? And where are we going to get the energy from? We're going to get it from the sun. So the first thing we might, so again, you could do it in different ways, but one way to go about it, which I think would be educating, that's why I'll, I'll go in that way, is to start really with saying, okay, how much energy is, got, is reaching from the sun per meter square? Okay, then we'll see how we go from there. So we have the sun, we have the earth, we have a meter square, and let's say we're, you know, just hitting us from above. Okay, so the sun is just above us. And let's say I'm looking per meter square and I'm asking, how much energy do I get here? What's the flux of energy? It actually even has a name. It's called the solar flux or something like that. So you might remember it. It seems from looking at you that you don't remember it. That's fine. Let's try to guesstimate it. Okay, like something like it's, it's you're guessing, but try to do it in a, in a disciplined way. There's, different, there's several ways of doing such guesstimation. One which I like is to say, what's like a number that's like, I'm definitely sure that it's more than that. One. And let's take a number. <laughs> what was it? And then there's a number that's like, it's clearly below that. And then... Try to take the, the middle, which is kind of like the geometric mean. But well, I'm guessing still I see the, the face as being a bit blank. Why? Because like, what, like, how would you do it such that you get like a number like that's a lower bound? What are the units? What are we handling with? Maybe we can use the cover with like one plus one and Celsius, I think, of some Maybe you could do something like that. I, I, let me try and suggest something even more intuitive, I think. The sun somehow reminds me of light bulbs for some reason. Right? Well, you know, it's both like light and hot, and also it's Hanukkah, so you can think in candles, but light bulbs. Are, okay, so I could say, okay, per meter square, okay, meter square is something like that. What would be a lower bound? You'll say there's at least, you know, there's definitely more light bulbs coming into it than this. You see what I mean? Okay. Okay. I'm thinking in light bulbs. Okay. Let's say strong light bulbs, like old light bulbs, incandescent lights. Let's say 100 watts or 50 watts, whatever. Okay. And I'm saying per meter square, when the sun is above us, I want to know how many light bulbs are reaching. Like if it's if I would replace the sun with light bulbs, how many light bulbs do I need in order to give me the same amount of energy passing through? Or, and you can think about like both the heat and the and the like just in terms of the energy requirement. Now it's clear? Yeah. Okay, so I would suggest if I had, uh, you know, uh, not participating so much, so I'd be participating, I would say it's more than one light bulb. Okay, so I have like a lower bound, let's call it lower bound, LB. Say one light bulb. Okay, now I also want to have an upper bound. 100? Yeah, 100 I like. So just to be clear, what, what, what was the suggestion here? Saying, you know, the, the energy coming from the sun, I don't know exactly how much it is, but it's probably not more or probably less than 100 light bulbs that I'd be putting just above 100 meter, about the square meter. What, you have that, what? How do we know? How do we know? 
Yeah, we don't know. Like, we, maybe you don't know. I think I know. It's not more than 100 light bulbs. What about the distance? What? Okay, there's a good question here. What about the distance? Yeah, so it's a bit confusing how I did it. I'm not thinking about now. I'm just saying that it's like these light bulbs are just, the whole thing is just sitting on the square meter. It's like you can think about it in a way like, you know, I put, I put them on this square meter and I'm looking at the, with the incandescent, there's also, although the, all, everything goes into light, some of it goes into heat, but that's fine because also our intuition, and we don't, not very good intuition of photons. Well, we have good intuition about heat. And I'm saying like what I get, you know, when I go out in summer and I have the power of the sun hitting me in a way, it's kind of like it's more than one light bulb and it's probably not more than a hundred strong light bulbs on this one square meter. Okay, so it's kind of like irrespective, it's like I brought the sun to me. Okay, I have these two things, I want to take, I want to get an estimate, if I have one and a hundred, instead of doing 50.5, and by the way, that reminds me, I proposed significant digits. Let's say I did want to take a, I don't, even if I did take a normal average, I wouldn't write it as 50.5. I would write it as 50 because like everything is so crude, it makes no sense to do it this way. So also try to look at how you, do, you see here it's one significant digit, here it's three significant digits. Remember like the zeros afterwards are not being counted. And one significant digit is usually, you're much more intelligent if you're doing it once again, at least in like, at least for people who understand what they're doing in, in numbers. Okay, going back, so I wouldn't do 50 because I, I don't, this is very, we talked about it before. 10 I think is a better estimate when you do, it's all an average on the log scale because they could vary by a lot. Good, so let's say 10 light bulbs. What is 10 light bulbs in terms of, uh, in terms of power? So it's about, we said 100 watts per light bulb, so it's about 100,000, uh, 1,000 watts per meter square. What's the true answer? Of course, I know the true answer. 300. You're thinking about something else. I could do that. It's actually about 1,000 watts per, per meter square. The solar, actually, it's 1,300 reaching the upper atmosphere, and then in, in going down because of all sorts of stuff, it gets to about a thousand. So it's actually, again, nature is nice to us. It came out to be a, a nice number. And, and again, I, I, you see, I'm like, I, I'm giving you things. I, I'm not saying that every, all the time you'll reach it, you know, perfectly right. I just want to show you that like you would, with some intuition, with like a way to go it up or lower, you can reach something that's about right. Okay, I see some signs, so let's yeah, turn on. <laughs> <laughs> ah, you think it's hitting us? Yes. Ah, okay, it's off. Okay, if somebody wants, you can open one of the one of the doors. Okay, so we have about one one thousand watts per meter square. So it seems like we could, you know, we only need hundred watts in, in our food. So in principle, you see, from the sun, we're getting a ton. Of, meaning, like, if if the energy, you know, if I go out. And just the energy hitting my, you know, my head, which is, you know, say 1% of a meter square, even less. If I could turn it in 100% efficient to, to run myself, I'll be no need for food. I can become completely solar. <laughs> it doesn't work that way. Not yet. So let's see how does it work. Okay, what's happening next? So I'm starting with 1,000 watts per meter square. What happens next? I don't... Now I, I want to look at, you know, the, the, whatever land area you'll have, you'll be having all sorts of a lower value. Why would it be lower? Because land is mostly water. Okay, I think there's, even before going there. Can you repeat the question? Because it's night and day. Yeah, okay, so for example, I'm getting a thousand watts when the sun is illuminating me to the top, but then there's night and day. Yeah. How much, just a second, how much am I going to lose because of that? Yeah, about 50%. So I started with 1,000, and then I have day, night, and I'm left with, say, 500. Still, I'm in a pretty good situation. What's next? Winter. Yeah, so I have hours, winter, seasons. All of this is like really like the cosine of the angle and all sorts of things that happening. The sun is not that. You can do the calculation, 
How much would you get? No, what's, what's the fact that you think is the result of this? Half. So also a half. By the way, there's a really cool thing for those who like such things. That's like uh, seasons and hour of the day, etc. And, and then a cool thing is actually it's not about half. It's exactly one half. How do I know it? Just for, I, just, I just can't resist. <laughs> if you look at the surface area of the Earth, it's 4 times pi times r squared. Right? It's two for everything. So this is the total surface of the area. But now if you look at the sun hitting, let's say the sun is coming from here. If you look at how much does it reach, you no, know, it's like you can think about the cross section. What's the, this is, so this is the surface area. Cross section, what's the area of the cross section? Pi r squared. Pi r squared. So what's the ratio between, and, and if you think about everything I talked about, day and night and seasons, it's all like the ratio between the total surface area and the area. What's the ratio? Exactly four. So it's exactly a factor of two, let's say from day and night, and another factor of two from all the angles. You don't have to care about it, it's just like it's a nice geometric coincidence, which I thought is nice, but it's not, the, it's not really, it's not the core of what I want to talk about, because also it's not, you wouldn't have these miracles happening to you all the time. So we really have about 200 watts per meter square, hitting our average land area on Earth per, on average. So it's, it's watts, it's like average over time, it's like joules per second. And like day, on the day you'll have more, on the night you'll have less. On average, you'll have 250 watts. It's over, all the, over the year, over whatever. Okay, what do we want to do from here? So from here again, it sounds like you're in pretty situ good situation, but now there's the question of like, you need to convert this solar energy into food. And now it's tough, right? Because now I could actually do that, but we don't have a lot of time and also that. So there's a challenge. How do we go from that into saying, okay, how much yield would I get? How much, uh, how much food would I get out of it? You need to know the efficiency of the plant, producing biomass. What is the portion of the balance which is food? Which is just the leaves or just the food? Exactly so. So how would I go about it? Could be different ways. Probably you'll try to Google it. But let's just for the fun of it, let's see if we could do it, the same trick that we did with the with the upper and lower bound. What do I mean? Let's say now I have my square meter once again. That's enjoying, enjoying the sun. I have my field, and now I'm producing. What am I producing? Corn. What? Corn. Corn. Anybody wants to produce something else? Potatoes. Potatoes. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so indeed, if you look in terms of overall yield, the thing that humanity produces the most is really uh, corn, mate. But then actually, but actually you can't eat that corn. Like if you try, it's very starchy. It's only, only animals like to eat this, uh, like animals that we eat afterwards. Uh, they don't, they, like maize you can't eat directly. The sweet corn that we like to eat and make popcorn, that's a very different type of corn. And, 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 with very, and with very much lower yields than the corn that we talk about, maize, that is being fed to animals. You mean the white type corn? What? The, the white type corn. There's different types. Okay, so that's about uh, corn. Um, so let's indeed talk about, yeah, so rice, potatoes, wheat. Okay, I, I think probably you have the best intuition would be about wheat. So let's go back to my square meter. And let's say I want to grow snack bars with wheat. 
okay? How many snack bars am I going to get out of my parcel of, of, of land, of one meter square, after, in a year? Okay, now I'm doing it, let's say, over a year. 1,000 snack bars. In, in a year per square meter. Like, you know, you, you, you put your seeds, you have the wheat growing, whatever, how much wheat, then you take it and you make snack bars out of it. So how many harvests can I do per year? Okay, so it depends. Usually you can do one. Sometimes you can do two. For wheat, I think usually one. Anybody grow wheat here ever? Maybe we need somebody really... Okay, so we have somebody who grew some... How many cycles can you do? One. Yeah, that's what I think. It's, it's true that with, other, like with rice you can do more, yeah? Okay, so now it depends whether it takes you three months or more. And the question... Like that, so, so how long does it take you with, uh, from the time you put the seeds until you get the wheat? Uh, more than three months. Uh, yeah, so caught until Shavuot, yeah, so it's actually, we have things in there. So I think it's closer to six months. And now it's a question, so maybe there's a factor of two here, which depends on what you can, whether the, the seasons are right, instead of whether you can go another crop. I think, okay, well, yeah. okay, we could go very far here. But I'd say again, like, so snack bars. What, what, what would you say is like a minimal number, maximal number, in terms of what you can get there? What? 10 and 100. 10 and 100. So you're saying an upper bound would be 100? One. And the lower bound? One. A lower bound of one. I like it. So let's say we have an estimate of about 10 snack bars. What did we calculate before about the energy content of a snack bar? So I think we had 100 calories, right? It was 25 grams, 4 calories, so, had, had, so it's 10 bars times 100 kilocalories per bar, and all of this is per meter square. So we have about 1,000 kilocalories per meter square per year that we've been producing. Okay, it becomes a bit long. Let me see. Okay, let's compare it now to what we know, for, um, what we know if you try to Google it. Okay, so I actually looked at, let's say, rice, which is something you know that's being produced a lot. And what's the yield of rice? Anybody grew rice here? That would have been very useful <laughs> if you had somebody. So I think you get about five tons per hectare of rice. What does this mean even? Right? So a hectare is also known as 10 dunams. That's 10,000 meters squared. And we have 5,000 tons. So that's 5,000 kilograms. If I want to turn this into calories, Yeah. Okay. So we talked about uh, every gram having four kilocalories, right? So I can multiply this by four kilocalories per gram. And this is gram, this is kilogram. So I have here 20,000, but it's kilograms and grams. So that's 20 million. 
kilocalories um, yeah and I got this per 10,000 meter square so I got about 2,000 calories per meter square per year. and it's what we got around per year so what we got we got about twice the value that we got from this so we think we're, we're on the same ballpark you could start talking about exactly the things well maybe rice you do twice a year maybe rice is a bit more efficient than wheat all sorts of things like that but you see we're at the same ballpark the interesting thing is, if you try now to compare this to the energy that you had here, 200 watts. So now I just want to connect between, let's say, I got 2,000 calories per meter square. How much is that in comparison to the, uh, to the 250 watts per meter squared? Okay, that's the key thing now. So let's try and bring these two things together. And I think that would be the, the, the key thing. So I forgot to write it. This is per year, right? So I need to connect between, uh, so calories, I want to multiply this, sorry. I want to go from calories to joules in order to connect to this. So it would have calories here, one calorie being four joules. I have meter squared, that's good, that's fine. And now I have a year versus uh, second, right? This is 250 joules per second per meter square. So the only thing I'm missing is to go from year, one year, to some number of seconds. Anybody remembers? Remember we had this 24 hours times 3,600 seconds per hour. So the 24 and the 3,600 that's 70 something thousand, I make it to 100,000. So about 10 to the 5 seconds in a year. No, no in a day. day. In a day, it's 10 to the 7. It's pi to the 10 to the 7. Ah, yeah, yeah, pi 10 to the 7. I'm doing for a year. You're right. Okay, so you can just do uh, That was 100,000 times 300 days. It's about 3 times 10 to the 7. And this is four joules, one calorie. Ah, this is still with the K. Mm -hmm. Okay. And this is also with the K. Yeah. Right. Okay. So if I'm not, I'm being a bit confused today, but you can repeat it or look at the recording or anything you want. So we have two thousand. We have four, and we have three times ten to the seven. And a thousand from this, yeah. Not very elegant. Okay, so 2,000 times 4, that's 10,000. Okay, but actually because of the, this is calories, this is not 10,000, 10 million. 10 million divided by 30 million. So I have about 0.3 joules per meter square per second. So I started with 300, 250 joules, you know, watts per meter square, and I ended with 0 0.3. Okay, I lost about a factor of almost 1,000. Right? Like if you do this, you're getting about an efficiency of somewhere around 0.1%. Sounds crazy, maybe. But that's roughly the average efficiency of agriculture, somewhere between 0.1% and 1%. Why? We could start breaking it down. Actually, there's good excuses why it's so. We could break it down. But I don't have a lot of time for that. I just want to try and finish up the, the thing we started with. We say we're getting about, it's actually nicer to write it as what? the joule per second 
0.3 watts per meter square. And we know we need to eat at 100 watts. So how much land area do we need? 300 for a person. So we need 100 watts to have, but we're getting about 0.3 watts per meter square. That's watts of food. So you see, we need about 300 meters square to feed ourselves with agriculture. So I can't do it, you know, just from, you know, for my area or something like that. I need quite some space. Not only that, but, you know, this is just from going, you know, from eating rice. You're not eating only rice. You're eating all sorts of other stuff for which the yield or the efficiency of production is actually worse. Specifically, what's, you know, the lowest one. So things coming from meat, especially beef, are even several times lower. If you do the calculation, uh, you're getting about a factor of two further because of the kind of diets that we're having. And you're getting to somewhere around a thousand meters squared that every person needs. If you multiply that by the size of humanity, just to do a sanity check, okay, so we got something. I'm telling you about one dunam, a thousand meters squared. Now tell me, is this correct or not? What would be a fast sanity check on that? Multiply by uh... 9 billion. Exactly. Let's multiply by 10 billion. So 10 billion times a thousand meters square, you know, it's about 10 million square kilometers. And if you Google it, that's about the area of agricultural land in the world. So that's roughly right. Even though I was not very, I'm sorry, I wasn't most didactic here in the way I did it. Okay, there's one last thing I want to finish before, uh, to, to, uh, to still uh, try and, uh, and do together. Obviously, this opens up, you know, there's a lot that could be done in relation to this, and, and you're welcome to explore it further and let us know anything interesting or fun that you find out. But now, actually, with this insight of, you know, the efficiency of agriculture, which is not that amazing, etc., makes me wonder about the following. Let's say I want to get from point A to point B and back. What is it better? To take my car or to say cycle there? Better in what way? Efficiency. Okay. So let's try and, let's try and define it. Yeah. Uh, in terms of energy investment what is the difference thanks between a car and bicycle. Uh, yeah, energy, so I'm talking now about energy investment, meaning how much energy I need to put in. Now, as you can imagine with, 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 uh, with the car, what kind of energy I'm going to put in? Petrol. Yeah, so it would be like fossil fuel energy, the fuel energy. In a bicycle? Energy bars. Energy bars, <laughs> right. <laughs> I like it. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put energy bars from one side and, I, and I'll make some distance. So there's the energy in the energy bar. But where is this energy? What, what do I need to do to get that energy? There's also the energy I need to... So let's say this almost comes freely. So just me going in my bicycle. But then I also need to eat more food as a result of that. And to create that food, I might need to put some... So I want to include that as well. So that's the... That's the thing I'm trying to approach because maybe in the end it would turn out that because of like I need to produce the energy to my food, then maybe it's not that great. Okay? So let's try and do it quickly. Okay, so I have my car and I want to go some distance and back. 
So do you know something about, you know, energy needs of, of a car? Yeah, so you could do it through horsepower, etc. But I just remember before we had like hybrid cars and other things, I remember like a rule of thumb of being able to do something like 10 kilometers per liter. Okay. Maybe with maybe a very special car. I think like no, normal like normal cars, you know, when we said uh, like, you know, before hybrids, etc. 10, 12, 14, something around that uh, per liter. And it's true that the liter is not a kilo. Okay, that's you can make it also. It's not very far from saying ten kilometer per kilogram of fossil fuel, even though the density is a bit different and something like that. What I want to do? I want to do it so meter. Ah, yeah. Okay. Now, okay, here's the R. It takes me time to remember what I want to do. This is per kilogram. But I'm curious to do it. I have here 10,000 meters, and I want to do it per some unit of, uh, of energy. Like how much, how much distance did I get per energy investment, right? We want to go, I want to go from kilogram to energy. How do I go from kilogram to energy? Kilometers, 10 kilometers, and we know how, uh, the weight of the car, so the energy is the, uh, you the can't, distance. Okay, you can try to do it that way, but let me do it quickly just based on what we had before. You remember we had fat, right? Lipids? Nine. This is kind of like, it's like fuel. Okay, this, both of them are uh, hydrocarbons. Gasoline and butter, they're kind of the same to me. <laughs> so what's the density in a kilogram? So this is uh, times 10 to the 3 meters per kilometer. That's trivial. But now if I want to do the kilogram, we had these units of like... Meter to kilogram. No, uh, no I want to look at uh, kilogram or I had grams and I had kilocalories. So it was 9. Okay, so it was 9. So let's make it 10. 10 kilocalories per gram. Okay, and I have, I have here again uh, 10 to the 3 grams, 1 kilogram. So what you see here is I'm having 10 to the 3, 10 minus 3, that's falls, 10 and 10. So I actually get 1 uh, kilogram, so with kilogram, gram, with gram, uh, kilometer, with kilometer, so I'm left with one meter per kilocalorie. Okay, so with one uh, kilocalorie, I can move one meter, not only me, my whole car. Just to remind you before, it's actually pretty interesting. You remember, like, again, thinking whether it makes sense, you remember with one calorie, is what we need per kilogram per hour, just to, for ourselves all the time. But alternatively, I could actually move a whole car with the whole mass of the car. It shows you actually cars are actually not that bad because you know they designed them, it's rolling, there's the invention of the wheel, there's good things that came that made us be able to do that. Okay, but it tells you roughly when you're driving, you can move one meter per kilocalorie that you're investing in terms of energy. Now we need to do the bicycle. How do we do that? So could be different ways, but let's let's think. Let's again think about this distance of ten kilometers, and let's think how long would it take us to do this? Uh, we'll finish in five minutes. So how long would it take us to reach ten kilometers with a with a with a bicycle? So ten kilometers. So you know we could do it probably like say half an hour. But then we'll sit down to drink coffee for half an hour after we did this, so like to relax. So let's make it per hour, just uh, so it could be. So 10 kilometers per hour, let's say on my bicycle. And I'm thinking, okay, how much extra, like how much, how many energy bars would I need to put into this? 
So probably I would like kind of like maybe two, like I probably would also need to have like an energy bar or something like that because you could also think about we said we're using a thousand uh, kilocalories per day. So per hour we're using a hundred. And probably if you were doing like this relatively, you know, we, buy, we just cycled for an hour, we'll probably be doubling the energy need for that time. Roughly, or which is equivalent to one bar, which we said has about 100 kilocalories. So this would, this would mean that we're getting about a, an investment of 100 kilocalories per this 10 kilometer. Okay, I invested this one bar or the energy that I'm using in an hour in order to get me the 10 kilometers. Okay, I wrote it. Uh, okay, so 100 kilocalories per 10 kilometers. That's about what? Um, I want to go again to the units of meters per kilocalories. So um, that's 10,000 meters, 100 kilocalories. So I use 0 0.01 kilocalorie per meter. Okay, this is also a cool, I can also write it the other way around, one kilocalorie per meter. So this was a car, that's a bicycle. So a bicycle requires a hundred times less energy investment per meter that I'm gonna pass. Everything's good? Not so much. Because this was fuel and this is food. It's not the same kilocalories in a way. It is, everything is like, it's fine, it's kilocalories. But for this kilocalorie, as humans, if we wanna eat it, we'll have to invest something. If we just, you know, what do we need to invest? We need to do, we need to produce our food. For that, usually we also need to invest energy. How much energy? If it's through fossil fuels, there's something called the subsidy of fossil fuels to agriculture, which talks about how much humanity needs to invest in terms of usage of, of energy of fossil fuels to create our food. Rough number, let's say in the US, which is very fossil fuel uh, intense, about 10. Meaning for every calorie that we eat, there's 10 calories that were burnt in order to run the tractors and the fertilization and the cooling and the processing and all the other stuff. That's crazy. I just don't have time to say how crazy it is, but it means that like this factor of 100, if you turn it into fuel consumption, it's not as good as 100 fold better because you need to do 10 times more in terms of like producing this, it would still be 10 times better. Okay? I have a lot more to say about it, but our time is kind of up. You could ask, for example, if I did it instead of bicycle, let's say that I did it with uh, like a scooter. Where would we, would we be closer to here or closer to there or something else? So I leave it up to you. Anybody's interested, you can dig more deeply into it. I had other cool stuff to say about it, but I don't remember now. Anything you want to add? Ah, quick teaser, just for one minute for what we're gonna have next time. If you, um, we're going to talk about uh, um, mammals and, uh, and the total mass on the globe. So if you had to uh, answer in terms of where is most of the wild mammals located, is it mostly on land or in the water or about the same? Mammals. mammals. So we're talking just about mammals, wild mammals. Is it mostly in the oceans? Mostly on land or roughly the same? Are we talking about like the size-wise or... Weight. Math, We're good at weight, math. yeah. A question is kind of clear? Okay, who's voting for... Um, only the wild, right? Only the wild, only the wild. Okay, who's voting for the land? I guess uh, more than half. Who's voting for this, around the same? Two, three, four people. Who's voting for the uh, oceans? A few people, 10 people. Okay, so we have a few guesses. The next thing you could guess and you can write what you want on the whiteboard. 
what would, if we had the top 10 wild mammals, what would be the first one in terms of weight? What would be the mammal that would have the most weight? Any, anybody wants to guess? Let's say of the land one, let's make it easier. So we don't need to know all the names of whales. So out of the, out of the land mammals, wild land mammals, what would be the one that weighs the most in terms of number of no, individuals? Only wild. Only wild. Any guesses? No. Okay, so we have elephants. Giraffe. Elephants, we had giraffes, I heard. Buffalo. I had rabbit. In total. Buffalo. Yeah, in, in total. In total. We had buffalo. No. Anything else? Gnu. Gnu. How do you write Gnu? Like this. Maybe it's not Gnu if I don't know how to write it. Okay. Okay. I suggest wildebeest. Okay. So we ha you have something to think about, uh, and we'll see you next week. Chag Sameach.